Thank you very much, Stacey. Uh, well, everyone, welcome and thank you very much for joining the Child Labour Task Force um, segment of the Alliance annual uh, meeting. My name is Simon Hills. I'm a technical specialist with the International Labour Organization and one of the co-leads of the Child Labour Task Force. And hi, everybody, and thanks again uh, for joining this session. Uh, my name is Ilenia De Marino, and I'm the co-lead of the Child Labour Task Force together with Simon, but also I'm a deployable child protection in emergency specialist at Plan International. So just very briefly, we wanted to share with you in this session um, our offer for the Child Labour Task Force in case you are, let's say, interested in joining the Child Labour Task Force and also to share with you our achievement this year. But uh, before we start, uh, we would like to ask you a couple of questions uh, just to get the sense of who is participating in the call. Um, this is just a warm up. After in the session, we're going to have a proper quiz. So, uh, you know, get ready. And Simon, over to you for the first question. Thank you. So hopefully in the chat, a Menti link will be shared with you. We've got a couple of questions, as, as mentioned, to uh, um, start things off. Um, first question being, is child labour a growing issue in the country you are working in or your country of origin? So if you can see, I don't think the Menti has been posted in the chat yet, but if you go to menti.com and use the code 68918096, you can uh, participate in this uh, Menti. I will put that into the chat right now. Thank you. The Menti link has been posted into the chat. Apologies for the delay. All right, thank you. Excellent, we're getting some, uh, some feedback already. The balls just bouncing across as everyone's answering. That's it, and the yes is uh, increasing as, uh, as the uh, answers come in so for all of you yes it seems 88 percent of you feel even more now 90 percent of you feel that uh, child labor is a growing issue in the country you're working in or your country of origin with only 10 percent of you saying no it's not an issue so i will hand over to elenia and for the next question let me unmute myself as always uh yeah if we can go to the next question would be great. Thank you. So we would like to know if you are involved in any initiative, for example, task forces, working group, a regional or national level to address child labor. Um, and we, if your answer is yes, uh, please feel free to use the chat and let us know a little bit more about the initiative or initiatives that you are involved in. And we will have a look at the chat later and also reach out, um, you know, in case um, there is an initiative we don't know about or we would like to know more. I can see that, you know, the majority considering, yeah, there are 17 people in the call, eight people are involved in some sort of initiative and only one is not. So please, again, uh, feel free to, to put in the chat what kind of initiative you are uh, part of. Uh, it will be great for us to, to know. Um, just not to take too much time. Uh, thanks again for your answer. And I'll pass it back to uh, Simon to finally start the session. Excellent. Thanks, Elenia. OK, so I think we'll go back to the uh, slides. Um, and we have a very familiar slide for all of you who are regular uh, members of the Child Labour Task Force. Um, just for those of you who are new to the uh, Task Force though, um, the Child Labour Task Force is a mechanism within the Alliance uh, for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action to ensure coordination and collaboration around prevention and response to child labour and humanitarian situations. Um, we have regular child labor task force calls and share updates through a distribution list of this. So please feel free to get in touch with us 
or to share with uh, other members um, details of your organization if you would like to be a uh, part of this task force. Um, as you can see, ensure co coordination and collaboration um, working. What we provide as well is technical tools and guidance, capacity strengthening and coordination policy and advocacy support. Um, the objective is to ensure practical coordination. Oh, I've just read that, sorry. Uh, the task force provides a platform to identify and seek to address common challenges in child labor and emergencies programming, providing a collective technical voice on child labor issues and emergencies for other core pieces of work, such as humanitarian standard setting, intersectoral collaboration, and global advocacy and policy work related to child labor. Um, technical tools and guidance, which we have, include the Child Protection Minimum Standards 12, looking at this, the interagency toolkit, the resources we put together during COVID-19 on child labour uh, and humanitarian action, um, and we have the regional versions of the interagency toolkit as well. In terms of capacity building, we have the e-course, there's a training package we have developed, uh, the competency framework, and then we've also had global, regional and country launches, both of the toolkit and other um, aspects of work to try and support the um, work of child labour task force in countries. And then in terms of coordination, policy and advocacy, as many of you were already there on Monday, it was World Day Against Child Labour. And so there are international events and activities that we support as long as as well as other NGOs and obviously ILO. Um, a couple of years ago, we had the International Year for the Elimination of Child Labour, which we were heavily involved with. There is the Sustainable Development Goal 8 on uh, free and uh, decent work and employment for all. And within that is Target 8.7, targeting unacceptable forms of work, which includes forced labour and child labour and all the worst forms of child labour. So we are also coordinating on issues around SDG Target 8.7. And then we have our coordination calls, as we mentioned. Um, there are a number of key links and resources, which those of you who are already members of the child labor are intimately aware of, such as the microsite, our child uh, labor task force website, resources on COVID-19, the child protection minimum standards e-course. And we also have um, previous recordings of our uh, meetings and other interesting sessions. Um, and we can, remind you of this at the end of this session as well. Thank you, Simon. I think we can go to the next slide. And the next slide is a little bit of a summary of the achievement that, um, you know, we had this past year. And Simon was mentioning it. Of course, we are going to talk about the interagency toolkit preventing and responding to child labor in humanitarian setting, which is now available in English, Arabic, and Spanish. I'm very, very happy to share with you that the French version is ready. And uh, we have just sent it this morning um, to be uploaded uh, to the Alliance website. So keep an eye open for when it will be available. Uh, we also have developed a learning package to go together with the toolkit. Uh, this is available in English, Arabic and French. We are still looking for funding to have it translated into Spanish. So if you're interested, please let us know. Uh, the training for from this learning package is a face-to-face -face training and uh, has a duration of five days. Um, we had this first training in August uh, in uh, Iraq, and we also are planning another one in the region, so stay tuned. Um, as I mentioned, um, all, the, all the resources that I'm mentioning, uh, we're gonna share it, as Simon said, either at the end, or we're gonna share it in the, in the chat. I've posted the link of the microsite, so you can have a look at it. Um, a second big achievement, I would say, for the past year was this uh, online training in Spanish, English and Arabic between November 2022 and February 2023. Uh, we conducted the English one as a global training, while the Arabic one was for mainly for colleagues that are working in the MENA region and the Spanish one uh, for the colleagues from the Latin American and the Caribbean. Um, the material of the training was adapted from the learning package that I mentioned before. I mentioned that that was a five days uh, training, 
Of course, we didn't have uh, that much time. So we conducted four sessions of two and a half hours uh, each for each language. Uh, we had a total of 100 participants for the three trainings. Um, and now with the, as I mentioned, with the final, uh, with the French translation finalized, we're also looking at uh, exploring more opportunities to conduct the training in French. Uh, but obviously, once again, this depends on demand, but also on the funding. So once again, please let us know if uh, you might be interested in having the course in um, this training in, uh, in French. Um, and then uh, last but not least, the last, uh, let's say, achievement, if you have been participating in the Hot of the Press session yesterday, uh, you would also know about the intersectoral paper education and child labor. I won't go through again into details, uh, but I just wanted to highlight that we're very proud because this was a very excellent collaboration between the Child Labor Task Force and the Interagency Network for Education in Emergencies. Uh, very briefly, the paper analyzes the dual um, relationship between child labor and education and also provides a set of recommendations from for practitioners, policy and uh, decision makers to respond to better respond to child labor in humanitarian settings. Uh, the paper is available on the Alliance website. Once again, it's only available in English, but if uh, you think it would be useful to have it translated in another language, please reach out to either myself or Simon. Um, so this is a brief summary of the, um, of, the of the achievement we have this year, and I'll uh, pass it over back to Simon. And next slide, please. Thanks, Elenia. Um, yeah, and thanks previous members who have had most of this update in our last call last month as well. Um, for newer members and for everyone else, just to try and get a bit more uh, awareness of your knowledge and understanding of the issues around child labour and humanitarian interpretation action. channels. Okay, we are now going to have a little quiz. So again, we're going back to uh, Menti, I believe, and I'll hand over to Elenia for the uh, first question. Yes, you can share the link in Menti, in the Menti, so I can read the question. And this will be a little bit of a quiz. So, um, you know, I guess be fast to answer. So um, according to the latest global estimates in 2020, how many children and adolescents are in child labor? 130 million, 150 million, or 160 million? So you can, I think if we share the link in the chat, or again, it, it should be the same link, or you go on menti.com and use the code 68918096. The link has been reshared in the chat and it is going to be the same Thank link you. for the whole session. Pleasure. Okay, I can give you a little bit more time. I think we were at 10 in the last Menti. And I think we can show now the correct answer. So well done to the majority of you that said 160 million. Um, just, uh, yeah, just a little bit of, uh, of a little bit more data, I would say, of these 160 million, 63 million are girls and 97 million are boys, and this is almost one in 10 of all children around the world. Um, and of these children, 79 million, which is most, almost, uh, you know, half of the children in child labor, um, where in hazardous work that, uh, as we know, directly endangers their health, safety, and moral development. Um, so I guess we can go to the next question and I'll pass it over to Simon. I'll add one other thing on that last question as well. Um, according to the global estimates as well, about 80% of children in child labor are in countries affected by conflict, uh, crisis, or fragility. So again, this shows that um, the importance of working on child labour in situations of humanitarian action and what this task force is trying to achieve. Okay, so the next question. Okay, which of the following regions has the highest number of children in child labour? Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America and the Caribbean, or Asia and the Pacific?
Okay, I think, answer, okay, we've got 12 answers so far. No one pumping for Latin America and the Caribbean. We've got 10 for Sub-Saharan Africa, three for Asia Pacific, and we can reveal the answer is Sub-Saharan Africa. In terms of the global picture from the um, global estimates, um, they showed that there was continued progress against child labor in Asia and the Pacific uh, and in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, and in both regions, child labor has trended downward over the last four years, both in percentage numbers and also in absolute terms of children in child labor. Uh, similar progress in sub-Saharan Africa has proven more elusive. The region has seen an increase in both the number and percentage of children in child labor since 2012. Um, there are now more children in child labor in sub-Saharan Africa than in the rest of the world combined. Global child labor goals will not be achieved without the breakthrough in this region. Which is not to say that we do not have to keep ensuring that we uh, are working in the other regions as well and continue the downward trend. Next question, Elenia. Thank you. So this is true or false. The number of boys in child labor is higher than the number of girls. Is that true or false? And this is, a, I think, a little bit of a tricky question as well. So for now, everybody agrees on true. Let's see, I'm gonna give a little bit more time. I think before we also have 13 participants, so I would say so 11 participants thinks it's true, two participants thinks it's false, we can show the correct answer. So the correct answer is, yeah, true. So involvement uh, in child labor is higher for boys than girls. And in terms of numbers uh, among all boys, more than 11% are in child labor compared to almost 8% for all the girls. But uh, when we think, when we include in the definition of child labor, household chores uh, for 21 hours per week or more, uh, the gender gap among boys and girls um, that are aged between 5 and 14 is reduced by almost a half. And this, uh, you know, brings uh, the discussion around, you know, how undetected as well is domestic work uh, within the child labor. So very well done to uh, the 11th of you that uh, got the correct answer. And um, over for, I think, uh, the last question for, to Sandra. Yes, it is. So the final question, children involved in family based child labor have a safer working environment. Is this true or false? Just to make it a little easier for those who are on the fence, I see we've got a couple who haven't answered yet. We are talking about child labor and not child work. Oh, the jump. Okay, I think we've got 12 answers so far, so that's fine. And the answer is false. 72% of all child labor and 83% of child labor among children aged five to 11 occurs within families, primarily on family farms or in family micro enterprises. Family-based child labor is frequently hazardous despite common perceptions of the family as offering a safer work environment. More than one in four children aged five to 11, and nearly half of children aged 12 to 14 in family-based child labor are in work likely to harm their health, safety, or morals. So there we go. I don't know, I don't think we have a... Uh, um, a leaderboard. A leaderboard, do we, for this, but... Um, all of those who got all the uh, questions right, pat yourself on the back. Uh, for those of you who didn't manage to get all of the questions right, that's fine. That's why we have the resources on the site. So please feel free to, uh, once this session is over, to make yourself more familiar with the uh, toolkit and other uh, available learning resources we have. Great, thank you very much, Simon. And thank you everybody for participating to the quiz. This was a little bit of a funny way or a fun way, not funny, 
a fun way to put the spotlight on the issue of child labor and to talk a little bit about numbers and specific issue. Uh, now um, to, you know, uh, change a little bit the presenters as Simon and I always present these uh, calls and also this session and I guess you had enough of that as well because we had two sessions in the previous days. We have invited one of our um, members of the Child Labour Task Force to briefly share his experience of being a very active member of the task force. So I'm pleased to give the floor to Marcello Viola, who is the Global Protection Advisor of Street Child. Marcello, over to you and thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, uh, Elena and uh, Simon, to invite me. And uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I've been working for, for many years in, uh, in uh, Nigeria, specifically in Northeast, and it's nice to see also the, uh, the Nigeria Hub joining. Uh, thank you for also <laughs> calling me uh, an active member, although I have to be honest, I, I recently joined um, um, when moving in my new my new role as a protection advisor and um yeah i finally find more more time to uh be part of this um, um uh, task force uh for us was very uh key to to learn more uh, about uh, the issues around child labor we we work as a child center um organization to make sure that children are safe in school and learning so um, as you previously say, um, the link between uh, education and, uh, and child labor are very uh, strong, both um, on you know, how child labor um, negatively impact the capacity of children to, uh, to attend school, and, and also education as a, a prevention of child labor. Um, both for allowing children to, to learn and develop physically and cognitively, but also um, to, you know, be able to identify children at risk in the, the school area and uh, intervene um, uh, with prevention uh, activities. Um, so, you know, like I, I've been reflecting often about uh, my direct experience and um, uh, I remember at the beginning of my Career when I was working in Sierra Leone, uh, we were um, we were having a project in the in the rural area of um, of Sierra Leone, bringing the schools where uh, schools were not available, trying to support community teacher with the income generating activity and uh, um, you know like uh, input for for agriculture. And then what we saw sometimes was uh, children helping the uh, the teacher with their farm during the specific uh, harvesting season. And, and, you know, I went back and thinking about the importance of also uh, being able to, to identify the, 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 the negative impact, the, 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 the risk and how to mitigate them or, or other, um, you know, other um, opportunity for learning by, from mistakes is when, uh, you know, you can support families to strengthen their livelihoods and uh, with income generated activity, and then you might see the child not attending school to to support the the family. So I think joining the the task force was um, helping myself and also obviously the, the organization in uh, understanding better, um, uh, yeah, this issue, being able to to design better um, our programs to identify and advance um, risks, and uh, obviously we've been uh, uh, learning and leveraging a lot from uh, from the the tools that um, that has been developed that you presented uh, earlier, um, you know, to 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 really have as a, a point of reference and. Uh, by joining the, the task force, there is also an opportunity to, to learn from, from each other, to, to share the successes, but also the, the challenges. I think that's where we learn most. Um, and uh, well, for instance, we had the opportunity to share about our achievement in a, in a program in Nepal after the, um, the earthquake in 2014, where we um, uh, targeted like the nomadic um, the nomadic group that were uh, seasonally moving for for job opportunities, especially working uh, uh, bricks factory, 
and because the highest demand for um, the, the reconstruction of the country, like brick factory, were having uh, strong demand uh, for labor, and uh, we identify like the, the children of this nomadic group at, at a very high risk. In fact, um, um, even in the previous year, they they usually were found um, to to help uh, their family um, uh, working in the in the factory. So. Uh, by by bringing uh, um, schools in those factory, by engaging with the parents and the um, and uh, um, uh, employers, we made sure that children were going to school uh, during uh, um, uh, the working hours of the parents and avoid any harmful uh, activities. Um, yeah, so for us it was uh, important to share this our lesson learned and um, um, joining. The call then we we also hear we get inspired also from from other uh, peer uh, organizations um i also had the opportunity to to attend one of these uh training that you previously mentioned i joined the uh, global training uh, uh in english uh the one that was uh online and i really appreciate the um the the trainers effort in uh, uh basically redesigning uh, uh, constantly uh, the activities to make sure that uh, we could, uh, we could uh, stay on time and get uh, the most important uh, aspect. I know that it's not very, I mean, it's, it's very uh, hard to maintain high level of participation in, in online training. So um, I think it was perfectly designed with two hour and a half per day, a lot of homework um but yeah i hope that uh, you know um all of us the, the 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 member of the task force can also contribute with with resources to allow um more face-to-face -face, uh, uh training that i personally feel at least for my personal experience are uh, more effective uh but yeah for me uh an interesting um, um take home um was about um um you know, identifying advanced um, risk and risk mitigation, uh, keep in mind the do no harm principle. And um, I enjoyed the session on the effective communication strategy for, for advocacy, how to use a positive communication approach uh, to promote and encourage um, positive behaviors from, from families and, and caregivers. Um, I was also reflecting on, uh, on what, will be done more maybe. And uh, again, my, my perception might be also limited from my recent um, engagement with the task force. I think it would be good to, to have more local organization um, participating and engaging. I know that often there might be uh, like barriers like maybe the, the language, uh, but also technical issue like the, the network and, and so on. But I think, um, you know, having more more participation and the learning also from uh, from their experience and their, their knowledge of the local context would be um, very important for for us and also maybe map out like uh, available uh, available uh, resources, tool and packages that can that's been proved to be effective that are very uh, context specific. And then I know that there is a lot of um, um engagement for for advocacy at the global and national level i i hope to see you know more live session where we might explore analyze uh data um, um and resources available in specific contests to reflect brainstorm about you know key issues in specific countries um potential solutions and you know, understand what uh, each um, member active in those contests could, uh, uh, could bring in. So, um, yeah, uh, sessions for really identify like country priorities um, that definitely can also contribute to, to, to the global advocacy. Um, yeah, and I also promise to be, to continue to be active uh, and, and contribute whenever possible. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ilenia. 
Thank you so much, uh, Marcello, to, for sharing your uh, your experience. Um, I mean, yes, you definitely joined like uh, very recently, but I, I do really believe that you have been an active member and also your participation here shows that you are an active member. And uh, great to hear that, you know, you had, um, you know, some, some good uh, learnings from our training and from participating in the in the task force, I'm happy to 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 hear that, um, and I also hear all your um, you know suggestions, uh, which I think are very useful. and um, And this is actually good that you mentioned because the next uh, session that we the next section of this session is actually to collect some sort of feedback or to hear more from the people that are participating in this uh, in this session on how we can improve our offer. Um, I really like your idea to having, uh, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, to analyze this country specific issues in terms of advocacy, in terms to, uh, you know, improve our advocacy efforts at global level. Um, so once again, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, I'm sure we will, we will see you in the next um, Child Labor Task Force call. Um, and Perhaps. then I'll, uh, I guess I'll pass it over to Simon. Thanks, um, Elenia. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't yeah. see you. <laughs> no, and for all of you on the call, please do feel free. If you've got any questions for Marcello, myself, Elenia, please feel free to uh, post in the chat. And um, I mean, in a normal child labor task force, we have the tour de table go around, get updates from all members. So hopefully if we've got time, we'll see what we can do and we can maybe highlight some of your other work that's been going on recently. Um, in sort of the same spirit, because this is an open child labor task force meeting, both for new members who maybe haven't joined before and are interested in this line of work, and also for those who are committed and have been going for a while, we thought it would be a good forum, especially with the uh, heads of the uh, Alliance present as well, to get information on what sort of initiatives would be helpful from the child labor task force to you. So if uh, we could open up the mentee again, um, We've got some examples here, but um, I don't know if you have the opportunity to uh, put others, but the idea here is just to get some of your thoughts early on about what we could do. And obviously, if there's none here and you can't add more to the mentee, do feel free to add something in the chat as well and we can discuss a bit more maybe. Um, obviously, the Child Labour Task Force for the last few years has been limited on capacity based on um, the um, time and resources available to myself and Elenia and Sylvia, who's also joining on the call, who is also uh, co-chair of the uh, task force. Um, and so it's very much in, in the hands of our members as well to try and help and support to see what we can actually help deliver. But we're more than happy to, to see what the needs are and see how we can better um, meet those needs. So as you can see from here, we've got what kind of initiatives, specialized trainings for the organizations, economic empowerment projects, awareness campaigns about child labor for child, children and society, training sessions tailored to the local context and adaptable training, and capacity building for NGOs and staff. I am guessing that the uh, Arabic boxes are of the same uh, options, but um, I can't guarantee that myself. I don't know. Are we um, putting these all together, Elenia? And do we want to ask the next question as well? Yeah, I was gonna say if there is any opportunity to translate the Arabic one, but I don't know um, if it's possible from we the. Could possibly ask the Iraq Hub to uh, to say what it is, and if everyone clicks on interpretation, we do have Arabic interpretation, yeah. which means that. Those of us who want can listen to it in English or French as well. Um, no, we're more than happy to have uh, answers in uh, Arabic. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and no, thank you, Iraq Hub, and everyone else who is um, who has uh, contributed. Um, I think a lot of these suggestions. It's showing that we're more or less on track. I think um, um, 
the training sessions tailored to the local context. We've been offering that for a while. Um, obviously, it's based on um, available resources, but we're, we've looked to do some. We've done a number of trainings on the toolkit already. Um, most recently, we had the Arabic one with the uh, led with UNICEF and the CPAORs for both Arab states and for Latin America. Um, so a number of these are the country focused um, problem solving sessions. Uh, for certain countries, we do have national chapters of the Child Labour Task Force, such as in uh, Jordan and I believe in Lebanon as well off the top of my head, and I think in other countries as well. Um, so please feel free to try and coordinate with those and, and then these more country focused ones are definitely more aligned there. Or you can also help set up your own uh, national chapters of the Child Labour Task Force if they don't exist, and we can look to see what, what support we can give. Um, access to training manuals and other resource materials, as Elenia is saying, we're doing a lot in terms of the translation of, of what we have, and the toolkit is definitely there, along with case studies, the, the eCPMS, and uh, many others. So please do have a look what already exists and what we're doing, and we can see what we can build off. And then in terms of the awareness campaigns as well, um, obviously, as we had uh, World Day Against Child Labour, and we do try and support where we can. Um, and then some of the other questions coming out of the Iraq Hub, I think were, were very good, especially on the employers and things like that. What may be useful as well is to reach out to your um, national counterparts at the International Labour Organization or plan or other um, NGOs who are involved. I know in terms of employers, workers and government, ILO is usually the one who's dealing with more developmental and normative side in terms of policy uh, work around child labour as well as um, some of the more practical and active um, programmes on eradication. So uh, I think we've recently had two trainings in, well, one training in Iraq from the Child Labour Task Force. And then also we had other participants from Iraq who were part of the Arabic um, CPAOR as well. So uh, I know there has been quite a bit of work going on there, but hopefully that will continue going forward because the need does seem to be there. Um, shall I um, hand over to you, Elenia, for the next question? I see uh, Sylvia has uh, posted in the chat as well about the... Uh, there's a lot in training manuals and capacity building and so there's also the facilitators guide accompanying the toolkit with set of powerpoints in the facilitators guide um so yeah as i said please do have a look at those resources yeah there is uh yeah building on what sylvia said there are lots of resources and maybe that also makes me think that during the next child labor task force we could actually have a little bit of more of uh, another unpacking of the of the resources that are available and show them. We we have a final slide in this session where we we are going to show you like uh, where to um, get all uh, or have access to all the resources. Um, but I think we are uh, uh, yeah we have ten minutes, so um, I will uh, go to the next question, which is uh, a little bit similar to this one, but it's also um, any suggestions that you have that would help us improve our offer. And I'm not only talking about, you know, the in terms of initiatives and maybe trainings, capacity building, but also maybe in the modalities of the sessions that we um, that we having. So every uh, quarter we have the child labor task force or also, you know, suggestion on how to make ourselves maybe a little bit more visible um, in the you know in the sector so anything that will come to your mind please put it there we can also leave this question open um, so maybe while we also look at um, the last slide the, the last couple of slides that we have you can uh, still add your suggestion there um, how can we bring translators in to allow participants from different languages? So you mean during the child labor task force? That's a very good point. And that I think is also, you know, one of the issues that we face during, you know, the, the online, this, you know, small online meeting, I would say. The reason why we did the training, for example, in English, Arabic and Spanish was that to allow more people to participate. 
but that obviously was a longer training and not um, ad hoc call, I would say. Uh, but we can explore maybe uh, some solutions um, that we have. Uh, but that's a very good point taken. Thank you. I think as well, the national um, and, and more regional uh, child labour task force meetings, which are usually linked to the child protection um, groups as well, um, should or could help with this and hopefully gives more chance for uh, local participants to engage in their own language as well. Yeah. Um, shall we just move to the other slide and then we'll, oh, there you are. That we would need help from the translator, please. Thank you. For... Simon, please. Sorry, Amy, I was going to say. No, 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 go, go, go. Some interesting ones there. I was actually going to uh, take advantage of Camilla being here as part of the Alliance. If there's <laughs> official policy in terms of uh, the Alliance on Child Protection and how they engage or do not in terms of issues around policy and law enactment with uh, governments. Camilla, have you got a couple of words you could say on that maybe? Can you say the word again, Simon, just so I'm clear exactly on what it was? Yes, so I mean, we've got the question here, like advocating with governments about activating laws, monitoring child labour, and there were a couple of others talking about the Child Labour Task Force actively engaging in terms of enacting laws or, or advocating for governments to enact laws. So I was wondering mm. what the Alliance overall in terms of child protection and laws on child protection, the, the Alliance is doing or what position you have in terms of the legal side? Well, we've never had a sort of justice for children task force or anything like that. I do remember some years back there was a paper published probably 2020, I think, around justice for children, which would have had a look at sort of more from a child protection systems perspective, um, how we can engage. Um, and I've seen some fantastic projects with children that have actually successfully changed policy and things like that, child-led projects. Um, obviously, it's a bit trickier with child labour because you normally have so many different ministries involved. In terms of government engagement in task forces, we do have some experience of that. For example, I think one or two task forces have um, a core membership and then an extended membership, and that extended membership has had um, government representatives there and they've been engaged with slightly differently depending on you know what's been talked about um, and then some years ago I did a training on the case management um, for the case management task force about 10 years ago and we had government and Zimbabwe ministry representative there taking part so that's probably the most I can say in relation to kind of general how the alliance has engaged directly with governments not necessarily on law and policy change um, but I would also say that it's something to put to the advocacy working group as a collaborator in terms of, you know, how to work with them um, more strategically on that kind of advocacy work and perhaps a tool that the task force could develop could be specifically around advocacy and engage them in, in its development. I don't know if that's in any way helpful, Simon. No, very helpful, actually. And then I was going to uh, take off my CLTF hat and put on my ILO hat and just say that the International Labour Organization obviously has a number of standards and conventions on child labour, and so is actively involved in this. So again, I would reach out for those who are regulars on the call. I think you're all aware of Convention 138 on the minimum age of uh, work and, and how that relates to child labour, also light work lists and hazardous work lists, and then Convention 182 on the worst forms of child labour as well. Um, so the ILO is involved there and there's also work we do quite regularly with our tripartite partners of employers, workers and unions and governments try and both enact these laws and also see how these laws are being passed. At the moment, this week and last, it's the International Labour Conference and we have the Committee on the Application of Standards as well. Uh, and this week or last two weeks, we've been looking at the fundamental conventions, fundamental principles and rights at work within the ILO, of which two of those core conventions are the child labour ones. And I know, for example, um, we've had at least one case in front of the CAS on Convention 182 on the worst forms of child labour. So this not only looks at 
the countries which have ratified the laws, but also how they're being enacted. And if there's complaints and saying enough isn't being done in terms of enforcement or living up to the commitments under these um, standards as well. So again, just in terms of advocacy with governments and, and what to do, I, I would definitely look to reach out to ILO partners. And also I know Save the Children plan are also extremely effective at looking at sometimes uh, government rules and laws on child labour and child protection and, and trying to have advocacy work to pass and enact um, supportive legislation. I would also just quickly maybe add that I believe there's a government representative in the Nigeria hub who I was at least earlier on in the call. So if they had anything they wanted to, to contribute um, on how they think they, they should, or others should be worked with, then maybe they can also share. Great. I mean, we leave uh, the chat open, of course, and this. Uh, well, they this... have they've come off mute. I don't know if oh, we okay, can sorry. hear from them. Stephen. Hi, hi, Lena. Hi, Simon. Hi. Uh, yes, um, we've actually made contributions to the emergency phone, and uh, what we did say is that uh, um, there's a need for uh, you know a continued localization of the tax force for the that one uh, suggestion we are put, putting out to the tax force. Um, the child labor tax force, right? So there's a need for it to, you know, have uh, representatives from civil society organizations and national agents in the decision making um, uh, uh, team. Yeah, that's basically our contribution. Thank you very much, and uh, over to you. Thanks for that. No, we're we're very supportive. As said, um, Jordan through the um, hubs the working group system has a child labor task force linked to the the child protection working group and others so i mean if you can get members to step up and advocate through either the protection working group or livelihoods working group that you want a subcluster on um child labor to look specifically at that then we can look to support you as best we can um but as you know it's it's mainly myself and elenia or myself and sylvia who are uh, giving our time and support amongst other things um, towards this. So it, it's very much on a volunteer uh, basis and where uh, other um, organizations can step up and help as well. Oh, great. And I, I think it's a, this will be a conversation we'll take bilaterally and then we'll discuss with other member organizations that are here present and we'll see um, which organization is interested in you know, taking up these responsibilities and then we'll get back to you. How about that? That sounds perfect. Yeah, we're always open. So please feel free to email us and we can talk more. And we can also get put you in touch with some of our colleagues on the ground as well, both in terms of um, the UNCT, the, um, the cluster system, and also with partners from PLAN and ILO, et cetera, to see how we could help support this as well. I think, I think that, would be, that would be a brilliant idea. I mean, we look forward to get our connection for this segment. No problem. Thank you. Great. Um, we will leave our uh, email addresses in the chat. Now, I'm very, very conscious of the time, um, but thank you very much for this discussion, very open discussion that what we were hoping for. Um, so let's go through the last slide, and then I think we will need to pass it over. Um, I think this is, oops. I think there is a one last yeah, slide for yeah. uh, on the PowerPoint. Yeah, thank so you. So again, just to um, we have a hands raised. I don't know. Yeah, and we have Vidika. Yeah. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, I apologize. I can't turn my video on. There was a power cut, so I did miss a little bit of this as well. Um, I'm. I'm from India and I was and I work with an organization that uh, deals with children in alternative care. And quite often we do have kids who because we do run uh, alternate care institutions as well. We do have kids who come in who are rehabilitated after being working as child laborers in the country. So um, this might be out of my ignorance, but I'm wondering is the, uh, do you offer any trainings or programs or modules that will help with rehabilitation of such kids when they're play, taken out of that um, atmosphere and placed in a different kind of uh, setting, I suppose? 
within the child labor task force not so much i'm not sure if there's other child protection um resources which may address that better i also know there's other work which is being done in india similar to this um we just had for world day against child labor for the ilo we had uh, kailash sirathi is it i might be getting his last name wrong who's a nobel peace nobel laureate for his work on working with uh, child labourers and <laughs> those in forced labour in uh, India. And so he's been an advocate and working on many similar sort of issues, I believe. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, in terms of like some um, child protection resources, we, we can definitely look at uh, some of the resources that are also available uh, from the Alliance, the interagency resources. So, uh, yeah, Camilla's put put yeah. um, some information in the chat, and she will exactly. put the uh, link shortly. Yeah, and there are also some guidance on alternative care as well. So we will put the links in the chat. And thank you for um, you know for your uh, question, uh, Simon. Back to you. Excellent, thank you. So just in closing, just for those of you new to us, um, just wanted to refresh on some of the resources we have, as it seems coming up in the uh, in the mentee and everything else, that these are definitely uh, worthwhile you having a look at and being more familiar with. Um, all of the resources are available at the Child Labour Task Force microsite and on our website. I think we've posted links already in the chat, but it's also quite easy to Google and, and find. Um, We've also got the community of practice, which we haven't linked here, but is also um, linked. There's some special groups, but for child labor, we're just part of the normal um, community of practice on child protection and humanitarian action. But if there's resources you want to share, information you want to find, please do post questions, et cetera, in there. And um, hopefully people will be responsive to what's shared and posted. Uh, and obviously with it being community of practice, the more it is used, the more helpful it is. If, if we don't post on it and don't use it, then, then it won't be of as much value and won't be quite as rich. So I do uh, encourage you all to share meetings or, or workshops or resources there, as well as asking for further help and linkages whenever you need as part of that. Um, aside from that, as you see, we've got the uh, toolkit information. You can see what the website has. We've, we've talked about all these resources, I think, during the um, call as well. So please do have a look. Feel free to share these resources within your organizations, within your countries. Um, really have a look and then have a deep dive through them. We also have Alison Ennion, who um, is on the call as well, who helped put together a lot of work in what's there in the toolkit and it is a very rich resource so so it may take a while to unpack but please go through it and have a look and then any questions you have you can always get back to us and we can also look at what's needed and what could be done to uh, support you uh, and the uh, context that you're working in but um we have now hit 2 30 i think that's all the time that we had planned for this session Thank you very much everyone who has been able to join. Thank you very much Marcello for uh, presenting and uh, sharing your thoughts and views as well. Uh, and thank you to all of you for being here and joining.